Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. I wanted to do a special video today. It's not part of our devotional series. I wanted to take this time to share the gospel with you because there are a lot of people viewing these videos, which I am so grateful for. And there may be people out there who do not know the Lord, or maybe you've been backsliding. So you need to be reminded of the gospel and what salvation is really about. So, hey, tune in with me for a few minutes, and I would love to clearly explain the gospel to you. So in the book of Romans, one of my favorite books in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul pretty much gives us the road to salvation. It's called the Romans Road to Salvation, and it's a few different verses. So that's what we're going to go over to understand what it means to be saved and what it means for Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. For if you submit to that, these devotional videos are going to mean so much more to you. And our church's teaching videos are going to come alive and they are going to influence you so much. I remember before I gave my my life to the Lord. I remember I spent time reading the Bible. I remember reading one of the Gospels and some of the Psalms, and I thought it was good, but it didn't really speak to me. I thought it was kind of dry, and I thought it was just like any other book. After I got saved, after I submitted my life to the Lord, those same books and chapters of the Bible came alive. They spoke to my heart. The, the, the letters jumped off the page. It was such a difference because, because now I was reading God's word with the Holy Spirit inside of me. So in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, Paul declares that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That all includes me and it includes you and it includes all of us. No matter how good you are, we have all sinned. And it's not that we sin, it's actually that we're born with a sin nature. See, Adam and Eve, they fell, they disobeyed God. And so all of us are born with a sinful nature, which, which alienates us and separates us from God because God is a holy God and he can have nothing to do with sin. He can't allow sin to be into heaven where he is because heaven would not be heaven anymore because there would be evil, wickedness, selfishness, and pride in heaven. So we've all broken God's laws. I think we can all admit that. Well, Paul goes on to say in Romans 6, verse 23, that the wages or the paycheck of your sin, your sinful nature, is death. And he's not speaking about earthly death. We all die. There was a research done here recently, and the research showed that 10 out of 10 people die and leave this earth. Well, he's speaking about a spiritual death, which is in a separation from God. You see, we are eternal beings on the inside. We're not just this flesh and blood, but we have eternal souls. And so when we leave this earth, our eternal souls are going to go somewhere. They're going to either be united with God in heaven, or they're going to be separated from God for eternity. And so the wages of your sin is spiritual death. But in that same verse, Paul says, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That free gift is what we call grace. You see, you didn't deserve it, but God wants to offer you a free gift, which leads to a unity or a relationship with God, which also means when you leave this earth, you will be united with him and other believers for eternity in heaven. Hey, if I had a $100 bill right here and I said, this $100 bill is for all of you listeners. I give it to you. I don't want it. I want to bless you with it. It's yours, right? Well, not technically. It's not yours until you come get it. So you would have to know where I live, come to my house and get that $100 bill for it to be yours, for you to possess it, for you to have that $100. It's the same thing with the grace of God. It is offered to all of us, but we have to accept it and we have to take it. When Jesus died on the cross, that did not forgive all of the sins of all humanity so that everyone would automatically be saved, have a relationship with God and go to heaven. It, it provided the pathway or the, the way for that, but it has to be accepted. Paul goes on to say in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, but God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You don't deserve Christ's death. 
I don't deserve it. No matter how good somebody is, we do not deserve that gift of God. While we were yet sinners, before we were even born, Christ died for us to pay for the penalty of our sins. You see, Jesus came to this earth as God, he is God, and lived a perfect life, fully fulfilled God's law, and he died a substitutionary death on our behalf. He died, he took all the sins of the world upon him, right? The father turned his back upon his son because all the sins of the world, past, present, and future were laid upon Jesus. And when he died, when his blood was shed, and when he rose from the dead, he forgave and he can forgive of all those sins. And there is overcoming and there is life in what the work of Jesus did for you, for me, for everybody. It's not just for one select group of people. It is for all people, all ethnicities, all races, all backgrounds. It is for all of us. Paul goes on to say, how do, how do we respond to this? This is great news, right? But how do we respond to this? Well, he says in Romans chapter 9, verse 9 through 10, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the mouth one confesses and is saved, and with the heart one believes and is justified. You can make that decision. See, you have to believe in your heart that you are a sinner, that Christ died for you, and if you accept that grace, you are forgiven, which results in a relationship with God and ultimately eternity. And also you need to speak it. You need to speak it out. You need to say it, whether it's out loud or whether it's in your own mind. And also we see in the Bible that we should tell somebody about it. We really should let somebody know about it because we just received the best gift ever. And if you just received the best gift ever, wouldn't you wanna tell everybody about it? Well, you should. Well, finally, Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, our last verse of this Romans road, for all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. All of us, we have to call upon the name of the Lord. So, hey, I pray that was simplified for you. And I pray that you would call upon the name of the Lord right now. You would call upon his name and ask for forgiveness. If you've already done this, but you've turned away from the Lord and you're backsliding or you've gone back to that previous life of sin that you came from, repent of it and get back on track with the Lord. I encourage you to continue to watch our videos that we post on YouTube because the next step of salvation is discipleship. You need to be discipled and grow closer to the Jesus or the Lord every day and less like your sinful self. That involves watching these videos, most importantly, reading your Bible, praying. Also, get involved in a local church. Spend time with other believers who share that in common with you. God bless you. Make that decision. Thanks for listening to this video. Have a good day.